Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio, presented by Celebs.com up here at TIFF. Tom Donahue. Thank you. Uh, congrats on having casting by up here. Um, it must be a little bittersweet seeing as though Marion Doherty, who the film is centred around, um, you know, passed away last year. It is very bittersweet, yeah, when it happened. I was on an airplane going to LA and somebody Facebooked me, you know, so sorry about Marion. I was like, what? And until I landed, I couldn't find, I didn't find out the news officially. So it was very traumatic knowing I, that that I, would have happened. I remember reading a, a quote, um, you you said something that she was like the, the Mozart of casting. Yeah, I did say that. Wow. And, and Paul Newman said that she was kind of like the father of casting. Which is a great line. Uh, so like why those, why those analogies? Why, why these kind of male? Well, that's true. Uh, well, I think it, it wasn't about, oh, that's interesting. Well, I think the Mozart analogy was just that she was an intuitive genius, that, you know, he was three years old and, and twinkle, twinkle, little star came out of him. And that's how Marion was with casting. It wasn't a masculine thing in that sense. But I think Paul was making a joke on Marion's essence, which had, she had a certain masculine essence. <clears throat> she was a bit of an alpha male for a woman, yeah. I would say. Well, that was the interesting thing about her, too, and the profession at large, is that the casting profession is so yeah. female-driven. I mean, in a lot of ways, a lot of the guys in, in casting, a lot of the men and women who are casting directors kind of always fall back into the shadows. They don't like to assert themselves. And I think that's why their profession, and that's one of the reasons their profession hasn't gotten the due it deserved. Marion was out in front of everyone, uh, partly because of her aggressiveness. When she had an idea, she really, really wanted to get her idea across. And that she also had a stable full of women at her house, at, at, right. at her offices. I mean, it, there was no male employed by her. Is that what's led to the state now? That Do you think it's those people who kind of yeah. work for her who are now running the industry and that's why it's female driven? Or is it just a business that lends itself to that? Well, Juliet Taylor in the movie says, in, in a way, the business kind of lends itself to that because as she says, you're there to serve a mostly male director and they'll tend to hire women who, who you know, this, these aren't my words, but tend to be more nurturing than men and a little more compassionate with people and so are better at, at handling actors and having the sensitivity to put together an ensemble. But Lynn Stolmaster actually said to me that he believes it was Mary in hiring women and he would hire women. And that's what created, I think, a lot of the demographic of casting directors being mostly women. I think it's 75% of the casting society of America are women. When you look at the cast, the, the quote unquote cast list of your movie, you know, Jeff Bridges, Pacino, like. It's a great all, one, yeah. All these amazing people. Um, did you, like, how did you go about having access to them? Or was it simply Marion's name or casting director's names? that led to that, that connection? I have this uh, genius producer named Kate Lacey who was an executive at Disney for seven years who had all these incredible relationships and she was very good with people too. And uh, that combined with the fact that they loved Marion and they loved Lynn and all we had to do was say those names and people would come out. What to you was the most interesting story about Marion's casting list? Because she obviously put these amazing characters like Robert Redford into epic, you know, yeah. things that became well, Butch Cassidy and, and Danny Glover. And oh, there are, like so, there are so many. It's yeah. hard to say. I would say, though, that in terms of a dramatic arc, John Voight's story in the film is probably the most interesting because she put him in a, in a TV show the first time he was ever on screen, and he failed miserably. And it's in the film. It's not very good. You kind of laugh at it. And Marion, though, when she was casting Midnight Cowboy, still thought he was Joe Buck and fought for him. That's yeah. amazing to me. Yeah, but the fact that she was, do you think that it would have been the case that anybody that she represented and put in those roles would have become the icons they are today, like Dustin Hoffman, Robert Redford, John Boyd, or, or like which, which came first, do you think? Was, was she just so insanely acute at recognizing talent, or was she the one who gave people the confidence to become those talents? Good question. I think uh, I actually think there's an alchemy. It's a combination of those two things. But the world was a lot smaller back then. There were fewer powerful casting directors who could make or break your career. Marion was at the top of the pyramid. Lynn was at the top of the pyramid. Today, it's much more fractured. It's much much more hard. Um, I mean, Ellen Chenoweth and all these other Amanda Mackey, all these other amazing casting directors that are operating today. Do you, did you have trouble with any of them wanting to share certain stories? Were there things that they didn't want to talk about? 
Yeah, there always are. And, and we, you know, we'll either try to get that story if we feel it's necessary or, I mean, generally they were very open once we got them on camera. Some of them being usually behind the scenes are a little skittish about going on camera. Was there anything that you would have liked to elicit from them particularly that, you, that just didn't quite get there? Well, no, but there's a lot of them where I didn't even realize. How, when, I, when I first met Lynn, it was, uh, hey, can we interview Lynn Stallmaster for 15 minutes? And once I started, it, it was a two-hour interview, and it felt like 20 minutes. And, you know, The Graduate, Superman the Movie, Tootsie, it went on and on. So I ended up interviewing him for 12 hours over the next two months. And knowing the full time that you wouldn't be able to use about a fraction No, of it. but, but it, was a, it was a journey of trying to figure out exactly how to tell the story of casting through these incredible pioneers. So how many hours did you end up with? Well, it's hard to say. We, you know, we, we did about 240 interviews at about an hour to two hours each. Uh, so there's that, plus there's an infinite number of movies, a thousand movies maybe, and there's a ton of documentation. So there was there was a lot for my incredibly brilliant editor to work with. <laughs> so was there anything in particular that you left out that really broke your heart to leave out of the final product? Nothing in particular, everything. Everything in yeah, particular? Yeah, everything in particular. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that these, these casting directors, I mean, if they're in a room in New York and there's tons of actors in that room who know who those people are, I mean, that's a pretty awesome position for them to be in. I mean, in terms of responsibility and um, a sense of power. Mm -hmm. um, yet, to me, they all seem fairly demure. Um, do you think they feel responsible for the decisions they make and, and for the people they choose or not choose? Is that why they've worked with the same actors over and over? Because they feel like, oh, well, I'm standing by my choice. It's a, it's a big responsibility, right, to tell a director these are your five, these are five great choices who could work, make or break your film. And even though they don't get the credit, they certainly won't get the credit if it, fa they will get the credit if it fails, I think, as a choice. Yeah. And you've worked as an editor a bunch mm -hmm. um, with other documentary filmmakers. Marina Zenovich was here the other day. Um, for you, what's the difference between, because editing in documentary filmmaking is partially a craft of directing because you're kind of yeah. finding that story and, and pulling it through. So for you, what's the difference? What's the satisfaction you get from directing a project rather than just editing it? Well, when you're editing the film, you're not in complete control of the story. You ultimately have to defer to someone else's vision, which as an editor, it would always get a little frustrating because uh, you know, I, at one point, I think I was, I was hiding in the shadows, not wanting to take a uh, complete aesthetic responsibility for this film I was working on. So as a director, you step out of the shadows and you say, okay, come get me, you know? <laughs> and you have to really be ready for that. And you know, having so many kind of notable people in your film, um, for you, do you ever, like, even though you're talking about a subject that you're kind of bringing all this, this information together on and have a justifiable reason for being there, do you feel the pressures of time with these people? Because they, they seem to have so many people wanting to, to a part of their time. Yeah, uh, there, were, there was one case, I won't name names, where the publicist kept running in and out of the interview and slamming the door. And even my subject was a little perturbed by that. There's other ones where they just go on and on and on and you kind of feel like they have a lot to say and you don't want to end the interview. And then it's two hours later and you run out of uh, digital space. And something that I get asked, do you, do you ever feel intimidated by any of these people that you were in there? Oh, no. I mean, come on, Robert Duvall, Robert Redford, Al Pacino, no. <laughs> Piece of cake. Do you get nerves still? Uh, you know, if I feel I'm not prepared, I do. But it, I, I tend to over-prepare so that I, uh, I feel completely confident going in and I know how to steer the interview. So here we are on the precipice of the premiere today. Uh, you, you've got everybody coming in. You've got a discussion afterwards. What does that feel like coming to a major festival like this with a project that you've worked on for so long, you know, and, and just being able to kind of present it? I, I'm really excited because I feel like I can stand behind it. I think if I felt like it wasn't up to standard, I would be nervous, but I'm not. I'm actually excited to get it out to the world. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in. It's been cool. Thank you, man.